live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. It's the Cube, covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Welcome back, everyone. We're here live with the Cube in Mountain View, California, heart of Silicon Valley, for live coverage of the Cube with DevNet Create, Cisco's developer conference for cloud native and all things really DevOps. This is not the core DevNet normal Cisco development uh, world, it's really more the, of, the, of the forward, um, progressive view of cloud computing. Cisco has their own DevNet networking development conference. I'm John Furrier with Lauren Cooney. Next guest is Jared Rose, He's an MVP for Azure with Quimada, which is his company there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, thank you. It's good to be here. So you're here to learn Cisco. Yeah, you know Microsoft, kind of bring it together. Um, cloud really has brought together a whole nother level. Uh, you know, speed, agility, all that good stuff. When you start getting into like microservices, Kubernetes, it really is an exciting time. So I want to get your perspective as someone coming in learning Cisco. What's on your mind? I mean, obviously you have your hands in, involved in the Microsoft side. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you're looking at? So for me personally, uh, my, my focus is, is a lot on, uh, I'll call it, I call it cloud, mobile, and edge. So I look at uh, cloud computing, edge computing, and mobile computing. And that edge and mobile space is where I'm really looking to see that the Cisco products uh, have a lot of use for me. So we, we have clients, um, let's take uh, some industries where uh, things don't, I won't say they move as fast, but they want to. So, so oil and gas, right? Oil and gas, you got pipelines running all over the US, and they, they put the oil and gas pipelines down sometime in the 80s and uh, liquid, gold, liquid gold actually flows through oil pipelines. Um, so they don't shut them down, they don't change them, they don't touch them until now. Now they need that, that innovation, they need that, that knowledge coming off the pipeline all the time. So I'm looking for Cisco to have that, for me personally, I'm looking for Cisco to have that technology to bridge that gap of taking that physical and helping me bridge it to the digital into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And what specific things about the network edge are um, either gates that are good for you, but also block or blockers. Where are the where's the pros and cons of the edge right now? When you look at IoT, for instance, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities? The challenges and opportunities. So getting started for a lot of people is tough. Which when you're trying to build out a project team, you know that mm. that can make it tough. I mean, if it's a new space, there's not a lot of people in it. If you got to hire for it, yeah. you got to find somebody. So you either train them or you uh, find something you can buy off the shelf to get everyone started. Um, what was the other part of the question? The opportunities and challenges. Uh, the opportunities. Is, it, is it technical, is it business, is it more? Is there it's all of the above. Um, I mean, pipeline, they have connectivity, they have power. I they mean, have, they, so it's a mixed bag. Uh, when, you, when you roll out something like a pipeline, it is so expensive, they'll actually just roll fiber right along with the pipeline. Uh, even back in the day when they didn't know they would need fiber. <laughs> but also, it's, it's a fiber line that sat out for 30 years, so someone came along with a dump truck and ran right over it, cut it in half, and then they haven't looked to fix it because they never did anything with it. But they also don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So, you know, if we talk about the amazing edge capabilities using you know, Cisco and, and Microsoft, well, we can do crazy things to where we can detect pressure changes throughout the pipeline to do preventative uh, maintenance so that we can see, hey, we've got a, an air gap problem here and we can go ahead and fix it before there's anything that would cause them loss or government mm -hmm. uh, uh, interference in, in moving that product. So, they don't know that that exists. They, they don't have an idea okay. that this is available to me or that someone can provide this. Uh, we have one use case where someone uh, took a drone and they would just fly the drone over eight hours of pipeline and try to check for any defects. Mm -hmm. And until they see that in action to them, they just don't know it exists. So it is business and, 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 yeah. and the opportunity is, is showing them this and helping them uh, integrated into their systems. That's great, and I think you talked about edge too. Can you talk a little bit about some of those use cases? Sure, uh, so let's say that we have a, an oil pump and that if there's a sudden pressure drop, you got a nice explosion, oil goes everywhere, no one's happy, right? So if I want to take that rating, we've got two things we need to run on the edge. One is, uh, they, the oil pipelines don't, oil pumps don't really go where people are, so they don't really run network cables out to the oil pumps. And right now, one of our clients, they have a, uh, an old RF tower. So they actually had fiber, satellite, and an RF tower. Make sure they covered everything. And it, within one day, someone cut the fiber line while there were clouds overhead, so we had to use the old radio tower. Mm -hmm. So one problem is you have to use the, one problem that Edge solves by being able to move the logic that you run in the cloud to the Edge, one problem that it solves is, is just that if 
cloud, I mean, if clouds can take out my infrastructure, mm -hmm. I don't have good infrastructure. Um, so having that in place running on the edge, or I shouldn't say infrastructure, my solution, if my solution can be taken down by some clouds coming in, it's not a good solution. So having it run on the edge instead of in the cloud means that we can do the pressure sensing for the oil pump and the shutdowns locally. Uh, another problem that it solves is, is even if I do have my RF backup, there's a latency thing going on there where it could be really slow. Mm -hmm. And if it misses that window to shut down the oil pump, again, it's just a bad solution. So the, the edge platforms really help us out when we need things now. And they, it, I use the oil pipeline, but my, my actual client, what they're doing is they're, they're doing uh, driverless cars. Mm -hmm. They're getting into that space and you can't, if someone runs out in front of your car, I can't send it up to the cloud to run through some data process. Nope. It needs to know it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk a little about the company you guys do. What kind of engagements do you have? Is it more consulting? Are you writing in code? Is it cloud? The one I run is, it's a consulting firm, so we do custom solutions. Uh, our current engagements are, one is security systems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice company uh, called Tellular. They got into the market, made all their money back in the day when landlines went away. So oh, yeah. they, it, you pay a million dollars for a security system, and then all of a sudden it runs on a landline, can't run without it, do you, do you get a new security system? No. You go ahead and you buy somebody who can let you plug into the wall, and so they made, they, they made a lot of money on that back in the day, and they've been slowly but surely staying in the industry, doing uh, upgrades to security systems, uh, cameras, everything, so that's one of our clients. Um, another one is the one I was talking about, uh, Metrotech. They do uh, the they do multiple things in the uh, driverless vehicle space. They do traffic analysis, lidar detection. Uh, they actually take the old cam. You remember the the traffic cams mm -hmm. that everyone hated? Yeah. That if you if you got too far into the intersection, it would uh, send you a ticket automatically. Yeah, unless you go like this. Right. <laughs> so uh, a lot no of those comment. cameras, <laughs> a lot of those cameras actually still exist after the politicians had to pull them back, and so they're retrofitting those cameras yeah. so they can actually detect traffic in the intersection. Is there a crash? Do we need to have emergency responders and that kind of stuff? And then uh, um, our final engagement is with a, a company that does another set of security systems for, they're called Rent Solutions. They do security systems for uh, big box stores, Walmart, Target. Uh, they do things that, that I wouldn't even think of in those kind of stores mm -hmm. to get analytics and to keep uh, yeah. stuff from walking away. I mean, they're hardcore on the analytics. Mm -hmm. Talk about architecture. I mean, you know, in the old days, you had a web server, you had middleware, you had storage and compute, application front end. Now with cloud, you, you have a lot of more opportunities, but also architecture's changing. You've got on-premise concerns, whether it's security, how you manage cloud and edge. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you're seeing that you can share in terms of success, approaches, general rules of thumbs? It's made things easier. So one of the holy grails in architecture uh, years ago was an event-based architecture system. So uh, if you think about a lot of the computer processes we have, we really care that something just happened. It's in an architecture concern, you care something just happened. Someone just logged in, someone just walked past a, a thing, a system goes down, a system goes up. You just want to know that things happen. And in the cloud, it's, it's actually made that a, a hundred times easier just to detect this thing has happened, but not just this thing has happened, but to expose it to everyone within the organization and let them do whatever they'd like to. So everything from a system is up yeah. to mm -hmm. hire a new employee and they're in the system. Or also, and also I think also interesting, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, is that an event just happened so you can capture it, but also you can actually put some synthesis around it with other data. Mm -hmm. You can actually extract some meanings, hence the predictive analytics trend and prescription analytics. So interesting, it is, what, what you can do with data now in the cloud is, is interesting. And I, I, talk, I can talk specifically for the Microsoft side. Uh, it's really at the point to where when I talk to clients about what they want to do with their data, it becomes a, like, how much money do you want to throw at it? We can get insights, uh, nearly unlimited insights. Uh, the way the machine learning is coming forward now into the fold, uh, you see people doing things like facial detection, speech mm -hmm. recognition, just out of the box, you just, you just yep. buy it. Right, and so uh, the customized solutions for those for customers' data, it seems to be unlimited on what we can train that those models to do and predict now. So it's a good good timing right now, good good environment. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, it basically, it just wasn't possible ten years yeah. ago, and now yeah. you can just whatever you want as long as you can pay for the computing power. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question. And I'll get your reaction because it's an interesting conversation. I was riffing on this at one of the blockchain events I was covering. In the old days, technology decision was the big decision. Everything was enabled based upon the technology decision. But now with all this stuff going on, business decision making is critical because there's so much you can double down on, you can spend on whatever. But mm -hmm. if, if insights are potentially almost not unlimited, but you know, plentiful, you really got to focus on what's more important. So this is really more the business model logic is now the risk 
piece. Technology can always move around. Right. So your thoughts and reaction to that and how do you uh, rationalize that and how do we get people uh, educated on this new world order? A lot of sales engagements now really are uh, a menu. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is a menu. You're putting it in front of a CIO and you're going, here, I want you to look through this and tell me what you want. Because we can do pretty much anything do you, and, and then they can start picking and they'd be like, you know, no cheese on that hamburger. Yeah, yeah. You can give them just a menu and say, do you want your apps? On the side. <laughs> yeah, do you want this on the side? Do you, what, what do you want? It, yeah. When you talk about technology now, it's really about just telling them, uh, if, you want, if you want all of your mobile apps enabled to have speech recognition, uh, facial detection, if you want unlimited data storage, it, it, this is just it. This is how much that costs now. And you can just go through your menu and pick and choose when and how you want it. Mm -hmm. So service catalogs become a big deal then at this point mm -hmm. for customers with the whole onboarding dashboards. Role of Kubernetes, is that in your world right now? And the Istio conversation that we're seeing here, I don't know if you've been following that here. So Kubernetes isn't necessarily my world, but the containers are. So the way that uh, Microsoft does the edge computing is they actually, you'll write an edge module and it's just a, a container. And that container just ships down to whatever device is running on the edge and it can use that instantly. And the only reason Kubernetes doesn't really get involved in my world that much is I do uh, serverless. So uh, we don't even look at the Kubernetes, it's behind the scenes. Got it. We yeah. just write code and it, it, it yeah. just runs yeah. it. Yeah, it's orchestrating all that, cool. And mm -hmm. serverless is certainly, I love that term serverless because it implies no servers, but it's servers somewhere. Somewhere. It's in the cloud. Um, <laughs> great to have you. Thoughts on this event, what are you trying to get out of learning here at the Cisco DevNet Create? Obviously it's cloud, it's developers, it's building solutions. Uh, for me specifically, I, I really want to see what Kinetics has to offer in the IoT smart city space. And I want to see how that integrates with Microsoft. I, I, I want to find out where we can meet infrastructure to the digital and make that integration as smooth as possible. That's Jared, great. thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate Thank your insight. You. The practitioner trying to synthesize, make sense of doing some cutting edge things. IoT, business impact, all happening in real time. Right here on theCUBE, more after this short break.